Today is February 6, 2015, and I have an editorial from the LA Times that is dated January 31st, 2015. And the truth comes out right here in the editorial. We find out that the lefty communists in California, they want to depopulate us. So this top part is called Crowded Out, and it says... Your editorial highlights a critical issue that's frequently left out of the conversation. We can't effectively tackle climate change without looking at our runaway population growth and overconsumption. And it's not just the climate change that's suffering from infinite growth on our finite planet. So a lot said there, and I made a video a while back. You could go search for it. It's titled, Climate Change and Agenda 21 are a depopulation program. And here they are saying, we cannot tackle climate change unless we deal with overpopulation. And then they go on to say that the resources on this planet are finite, like it's a settled science. But the reality is, is we have perceived scarcity where we are tricked into believing things are scarce when they are not. As human population has skyrocketed, so has the rate of wildlife extinction. Species are going extinct at 1,000 to 10,000 times the natural rate, largely driven by the demands for food, water, land, and energy of a population that's doubled in the last 50 years. Our environmentally devastating hunger for meat and fossil fuels has worsened the problem. In short, we're crowding out the planet's biodiversity. Now, I personally cannot say much about uh, animal populations going extinct. However, I can say if you're talking about the last five years, that's because of Fukushima. That's why animals and plants are going extinct. And then they talk about how the population of the world has doubled over the last 50 years. Well, what's happened over the last 50 years? We only had the most successful boom in world history with the most prosperity the world has ever seen. We went into a new age where we had plumbing and electricity and television and all these other things that have made our lives more comfortable, more better. And that's why I say Agenda 21 is about bringing us back to a dark age because they don't want us having those things. Those things mean we live a long time, we flourish, and we prosper, and the globalists do not want us flourishing or prospering. They want to kill us. That's why they're talking about depopulation in their newspaper. Unfortunately, conversations about population are often shut down before they even have a chance to begin. We can't continue to stay silent about the impact of our sheer numbers, and we shouldn't have to when the solutions are increasing education for girls, for girls, only for girls, guaranteeing safe access to reproductive health care, advancing human rights and equality, and, to, and choosing more sustainable lifestyles that are healthier for people, wildlife, and the planet. Translation, you get out of your car, you move into a little apartment, and you barely use any water or electricity every day, and that's good for the planet, and you walk everywhere, and that's healthy for you. And then it says, the writer is Population and Sustainability Director at the Center for Biological Diversity. In other words, it's their job to push Agenda 21 all day long. So now here's the... Uh, the letters uh, from uh, our local uh, communist readers here in uh, Southern California. So at the far left, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing up this most important issue facing us and the earth, overpopulation. It has become taboo for the news media to discuss this most critical issue. We are using up the planet's resources at unsustainable rates. My field of expertise is water. And all across the United States and Asia, we are mining groundwater at rates that in a few decades will result in major famines due to reduced agricultural production. Please keep attention on this critical problem. If we don't deal with it, war and famine will. So I have something to say to this first person and uh, the main person in the article, the uh, person that pushes Agenda 21, and that is this. If you really think there's a problem with overpopulation in the world, then why don't you be a good citizen who cares about the world, and why don't you volunteer yourself to be the first one to kill yourself? Because that's what you're saying. You're saying, I have to die, because if I don't die and I live, I and many others will use up too many of the world's resources. Well, I don't believe in that, so I'm not going to kill myself. But if you believe in that, why don't you do it for the good of all of us and the common good, and why don't you kill yourself if you think this is such a problem? Next one. 
I have been saying this for 30 years. Earth's resources are not infinite. I used to be a ZPG advocate, zero population growth. That meant one person born to replace one person who dies. But for the last 10 years, maybe longer, I have been an NPG advocate, negative population growth. If humans want to remain on this planet and enjoy its bounty, we must start respecting the earth and quit polluting it with the worst offender. People, once again, if you think there should be negative population growth in the world, then go ahead and kill yourself. I'm serious. I'm not going to kill myself, so I'm going to stick around for a while. But why don't you kill yourself if you believe in negative population growth? These people are, are totally insane. And this whole thing about one person born to replace one person who dies, it doesn't work that way. That is eugenics. So here's the last one. Reducing America's population would indeed minimize our overuse of global resources such as fossil fuels and could also preserve our own critical resources including water, but reducing birth rates will not suffice. Americans ended the baby boom a half century ago and already have small families similar to countries with shrinking populations. America grows because Washington allows ever more immigration. Shrinking the U.S. population requires reducing immigration to historic level. I hope the media explore this option, which could refocus the politicians' one-sided immigration de debate, which considers only immigration increases. So it doesn't go both ways. If you're going to be a commie liberal who's for depopulation, then you also have to be for immigration because the people on your side that you vote for believe in open borders. And this whole thing about fossil fuels, I mean, come on. Common sense tells us that fossil fuels have been debunked. And the reason for this is, first off, fossilization is extraordinarily rare in nature. It's something like only 1% or less of all the animals that die become fossils. So there are not very many fossils to begin with. But then you're saying there were so many dead animals that died in concentrated areas that we have enough fuel to power us for multiple decades. And this whole thing about climate change and global warming, it's all a lie. Just the way peak oil was a lie in the 70s. They told us we were about to run out of oil. And look what's happened. It's been almost 50 years now, and we've pumped like there's no tomorrow, and now we have oversupply. And I can prove that to you. I'm going to show you the clip right now where they tell us we have oversupply of oil. This is all a big lie. They use the notion of perceived scarcity to make us pay more for things, to make things more artificially expensive, and to reduce our lifestyles. Well, here's some news that drivers can celebrate. Gas prices keep dropping. The AAA is expecting prices to soon fall another 15 to 20 cents a gallon, and it's likely that they're going to remain low this winter. The reason? Abundant supply.